Welcome back. We are here. This was a weird week. Um, all right, on Monday, we started with some four inch block pulls. Here's Val pulling four plates. Um, this is a really weird starting position. Uh, it's hard to explain to people, but just because the range of motion is smaller doesn't mean that it's going to be easier. The starting point is a little more difficult. Uh, so here's uh, Val with 425. She really did a good job staying in position through the middle when it got hard. Uh, on this same day, I was having Peaches do quadded mini bands. Uh, I believe it was pin two. Uh, these were these were pretty good. Um, I went into this session feeling like dog shit, and I really was curious how it was gonna go. Um, this is a tough uh, variation for me. I have a hard time with this one. Uh, this was Corey's first time in a suit. So four inch block pull is like a perfect opportunity for him um, to get into gear. There's Peaches with an awesome fucking grind. Um, here's Sean. I'm not sure what this weight is. He blasted his PR. So um, he's getting better at not hitching at the top, which is huge. Uh, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seventy five. Moved pretty good. I was pleased with that. Um, Corey, 675. Smoke. He is saying how there was a lot of pressure in that suit, which was pretty funny, especially since we're going off of a four-inch block. Let Sean swing for 675. Got it off the floor, but then he died. Uh, here is whatever, six... It was 725 or whatever. I got... Missed it because I wasn't paying attention. Got pissed. Basically turned right around and pulled it. That was me not taking it seriously and kind of being a little little, uh, little smaller right now. So here's Corey with the 725. Great pull. Great pull. And then I went for an all-time PR for 780 or whatever, and it, it didn't get off the ground. I was pissed. Um... I think Corey gave his a little bit of a better fight, but he was pretty dead as well. Close, close. If that had gone another inch, it would have gone. And then we did this next thing that was just like hell. Um, we worked up to fucking three plates on the bar with that, and it was awful. So uh, here's Wednesday. Normally this would be a deload day just because we're coming off of like the shirt week. Um, but we figured since we were going to Utah later this week that we could kind of push it and um, you know, get, get a heavy bench in before we jumped out the door. So, um, here's Val. This is, uh, 45, 55. I think this was 175, which is only 10 pounds off of her best or 15 pounds off of her best. Uh, peaches, smoke. This is a fun variation. I have a really good time with this one. Um, I like benching full range against minis. It's a good, pretty good indicator for me. Um, here's Beaches again. I'm not sure what the bar weight was on that one. Um, and then Connor's been dealing with a shoulder issue. So we're just trying to get some work in for him. He's got to kind of learn how to like not rush through the reps and squeeze each rep. Let's try to get as much as you can out of a lighter weight, right? So... Shorter range of motion for him for the time being, but we'll keep kind of chipping away at that. Uh, here's Corey with three plates, so 325 with that bar. Very good job. I can't tell if his butt comes up. I think his butt's coming up, but he says it's not, so we'll see. Uh, here's 375, like a last warm-up for me. Very easy. My best ever is 4, uh, 405. Um, we were, did the smart thing and didn't jump Corey to quarter and he handled that really well and then here is uh pr for me with 415 and this moved pretty well too i was kind of shocked because been having some some dings lately so took the 10 pound pr and got the fuck out of there uh into some kind of high volume rollbacks and then this fucking <laughs> me trying to figure out 
what's going to go where, when it's going to go there, what order we're going to do it. This is absolutely brutal uh, super set. Kind of like a push-up drop set. You're like going on a decline, then you're going on a two-board, then a three-board. Um, so this is really cool. Like I've really enjoyed adding push-ups to the normal uh, training. I know it's not something that powerlifters usually use, but for me, I found that it's a great way to keep my pec healthy. Um, it's a great way to put on some size in my chest, and uh, it's hard on the triceps too, surprisingly. Even if you have strong triceps, like push-ups can be a great thing to add in um, as an accessory to either like wear you out before you get into some stuff or uh, use as kind of a finisher. So, um, yeah, let's uh, check out the rest of us dying trying to do these. What's cracking? It's travel hat. It's travel hat, can't see out the back. That was fogged up. Yeah, it's fogged up out here, bro. It's time to go to nationals, baby. Yeah. So we are about 20 minutes away from parking the car, getting on the shuttle to get in, uh, on the plane for an 8 a.m. flight, which doesn't seem early until you have to wake up to get there. So we're on our way to do that. We have a layover in Las Vegas and then out to Utah. And I'm not stoked on the full day of travel, but I'm super stoked to see all of our lifters kick some ass at nationals. Not meet the criteria listed in that card for what Rental car won't start. So my plan was to do a lot of vlogging when we were traveling, uh, but it has basically been a shit show since we uh, started this morning. So we took a shuttle in that we weren't used to, so we we're kind of running late. Um, so I was like panicky and like, okay, like I'll get my shit together on the layover. Um, that didn't happen because we literally got onto the tarmac from Vegas in, uh, no, from Boston into Vegas as the other plane was supposed to start boarding. So again, we were like super rushy pants. Um, and that flight ended up being delayed. So by not a long time, but still I was like, I'm not going to vlog right now. Um, and then we got into Salt Lake and we used Turo for the first time got to the car and it's completely dead so it's been a day so not a lot of cool artsy uh travel footage but we're here we're figuring it out i guess i'll give you an update when we do figure it out it, it is beautiful though just ignore the cars we made it hi we're in a charger eating egg bites so we got refunded by Turo um, but we won't see the refund until like three or five days whatever 
Um, that was a shit show. I don't know if you guys use that or not, but uh, we won't ever do it again. It might be awesome, but we're never going to do it again. Mm -hmm. Some very nice lady helped us out at Alamo, um, and we have a charger now. So, vroom, it's all right. Vroom, vroom, Just took longer than expected. All right, so here's the deal. Well, in and out. Okay. Well, in and out, okay. All right, so here's the deal. You guys are gonna see a little bit what's under the hood of like mentality stuff, right? So I was talking to, I had a phone call with a guy who coaches rugby in Australia the other day. And he was asking me questions. He like, he paid for like an hour of my time, right? And we were just chatting. So he was asking very specific questions and part of it, that he asked me, he said, what's not on paper? He said, what do you mean? He said, you know, what's the difference between you and somebody else that's maybe doing the same programming, you can write them the programming and they're not gonna get the same results, like what's the difference? And we kind of just spoke on intensity and, and like my like unwavering belief in myself and like that I can, I can do whatever the fuck I want, right? And that is a big thing. So another thing, like, so that's kind of like something that's not on paper is like I don't miss training cycle like training sessions right like I haven't fucking you know I don't miss training se sessions but I've not gone to training I don't miss them like oh I'd rather be doing oh I this oh I'm hurt I don't feel good like whatever right I don't miss that way but I'm not training today today's Friday we're in Utah right we're like three and a half months out from the WPO right July to August September, October, November, so four months, right? And uh, we, I thought you were holding up a five at me. No. I'm like, oh, God. So, uh, you know, I've basically been in like a working out phase, right? Like not necessarily training, hitting some PRs, but nothing like, you know, it's more so been like, all right, kind of hypertrophy and just waving the intensity back up and, and getting ready to actually hit the gas. So this trip to Utah is like, comes at like a perfect time to just like, okay, so we, last week, we deloaded our deadlift, we got in a bench shirt, we free squatted. I don't think I was in the right type of shape to put all those that close together. <coughs> and then on Monday we deadlifted. So normally this past Wednesday I would deload, but I knew I was coming up on this weekend. So I took a heavy bench. I ended up PRing it, which was great. But uh, this weekend, it kind of gives me an opportunity to recalibrate, right? Just had like a really hard, whatever, th 12 days of training, right? And I'm feeling pretty beat down from that. Supplements are low. Look at those beautiful, yes. beautiful fucking scenery around here. Anyway, um, so we just what we decided was I trained Wednesday, we got on a plane Thursday, we're here on Friday, I'm not gonna train today, right? Anything that I would do out here is not gonna benefit me, it's just gonna beat me down more. I don't need more GPP right now, I'm not trying to accomplish that. So instead, we're taking this Friday as an opportunity to go see some stuff we've never seen before, have some time with my wife, relaxing, and doing like the tourist thing for the day, right? Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be handling people all day at Nationals. Stoked on that. Monday, we have a late flight, but we have an early checkout of our Airbnb. So Monday, we're going to hit like a Planet Fitness and do a bunch of like hamstring, glute, low back, lat, like accessories, like deadlift accessories, just to get moving again before we get on the plane. And then when I come back, it's Tuesday, eat, sleep, Wednesday, hit the gas for WPO. So this is a... Uh, like a deload after a hard week, a hard couple weeks, and we're trying to put it together so that I feel ready to um, really put the work in getting ready for WPO. So it's I don't consider it a missed session. I still lunged. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. This is a purposeful skip um, so that I can be, so that I don't do something stupid to hurt myself for no fucking reason. And also... Uh, give me a, a chance to recalibrate and get ready for the WPO. So it's very nuanced, and you got to be able to make those decisions. Um, they'll help lengthen your career. And by the time I get home, I'm going to be itching to fucking touch a barbell. And all of a sudden, you you regain that like need to fucking train. So um, all 
mapped out and important stuff. And I hope it makes sense to you guys. This may come to a surprise to you all, but not much of an outdoorsman. But here we are, outdoors in it. So this was Antelope Island. Um, it's like, I think it's one of the state parks or whatever. Um, and we got, you basically like drive through, there's like, crazy amounts of buffalo or bison rather and like this was so cool these two like walking across this like barren wasteland it was so sick and then kind of came up on this road where like they were really close to the side it doesn't really do it justice how close they were but it was like it was like kind of scary you know because they're so fucking big and you see the videos of them just like bodying people so there were a few moments where we're like, oh, we might die. And then here's a little little pronghorn we found out was the second fastest land mammal or something like that. Fast little buggers, but we saw them and that was really cool. Meanwhile, back in New Hampshire on Friday, the boys are out here working. So truth be told, I haven't really watched one of these. I don't know why they're using that bow bar, but they are. Um, and Corey and Peaches were sort of left to their own devices. Um, sometimes you give people a little bit of freedom to see what they do with it. Um, and based on what I saw from their workout, what they told me, um, they made pretty good, uh, decisions. This is Peaches' second week with the bow bar and bands. This would be Corey's first week. And we're just like working on, um, well, let me say this. When we come back around, so this coming Friday, it'll be week one for Corey. Because um, we're going to go to a different setup. Uh, so let's see how these look. Good pick. Good patience getting to the box. Good speed off the box. So that looked pretty good. I told them to do, it's kind of plopping a little bit, to be honest with you, but good speed on the bar. Um, I told them to pick a couple things to do to hammer their legs. It looks like they're doing slow tempo front squats with the safety squat bar. Now, I'm not a fan of front squats with the safety squat bar. I'm going to be honest with you. But you can definitely get some fucking work in. It's definitely going to work the shit out of your middle back um, as well as your legs. But kind of sets the camera up so that the plates are behind you. So it's almost like a front loaded back squat. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of this. But the boys had some time by themselves to do some stuff. So they did some stuff. Now, the next clip... Looks like it was taken with a potato. Don't know why it came through this way, but we thought it was funny. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, the old West Side tapes shot on VHS. Um, sort of goofy, but we thought it was funny, so we included it. These are actually sped up right here, so they definitely were doing tempos. Uh, and yeah, big, big fan of these guys kind of taking some ownership of their training, doing some sort of different things. I got no problem with that uh, as long as it's nothing that's going to hurt them or do anything weird. Now, the next clip is just going to show you how jacked Corey is. He's a big boy. So they did step-ups with a band pulling him back, which is, I think, it's a fucking great idea. I had never done that before. So that, that's a really cool thing. It's just some, some guys like you know, they'll see, that's the beauty of conjugate, you know? You get to just kind of like add up these different things and kind of come up with your own ideas. And now this is one that I'll definitely use. Um, I'll probably make a squat builder video out of it um, and not give them any credit. I'm just kidding. I'll give them all the credit in the world. So it was obviously hot in there. Corey basically had no clothes on. Um, and Peaches seems to be having a hard time. I believe I was told that he vomited during this session. 
So, you know, have fun watching him kick the shit out of himself. person we had at this one was Autumn. She's a lifter from uh, Anchor. She's a raw lifter in wraps. This was her first time traveling further than like an hour away from meat. Um, Autumn is still pretty new to powerlifting. And when I say new, she's a few years in. Um, so she's still kind of like figuring out her process for competing. So that was 402. Um, she definitely got loose on that one in the bottom. <laughs> Connor was doing his practical for his <laughs> judging. So it was a pretty long day. There were like 63 lifters. Uh, this is 440. This is to like set her up for a PR on her second one. And something that Autumn learned at this meet was it doesn't matter if you've done it before. You haven't done it yet today. So I don't think she hit this one with the same sort of tenacity that she usually does. Um, and kind of got smashed by it. Um, and so we stayed at the same weight. I said, listen, this is nationals. That is not how you address these. You can't go up and you know pretend that it's already happened. You gotta take it with some intensity. And this one you can see, she had the fucking fire. And it basically looked like an open one. She was stoked. So that was really cool. Um, and she was excited about it, which is awesome and uh, gets to give her fiance a big hug, which is also really rad to be able to see. And then a very long time later, because uh, it was never seen very it long. No one's hand is shaped like this. I'm fucking mad. Dude, look at this. Look at that. Tristan's thumb is fucking weird, dude. I don't know it's what. starting to look like a fat man's dick. Look at that. He's got going on there. That's but like it's a, it's a thing. Uh, on the bench, so... Um, I was a pretty good bencher. Um, I know that she doesn't particularly love it, but um, technically she's pretty good. So we were hoping for a full meet PR. She'd done a push pull, so we were trying to match her push push pull record, um, which would be a full meet PR record. Um, here's an opener 187. She looked really good here. Boom, no problem. See you later. Um, we were stoked on that, so we jumped to four, I think it was 409, or uh, 209, 409, 209, I believe, um, and she handled this very well. Also, obviously the angle of these videos, it was like impossible with the bench facing that way. They actually changed it on the day two. Uh, and then we went to her third, um, where she's just, you can tell she's just out of gas, just not going anywhere. So, um, yeah, the elevation really got to people. And then, much later, the funny thing is, I'm not a SpongeBob person, but Val is, so you're getting SpongeBob references. And you just deal with it. So, here's her opener 358, which we bumped down about 30 pounds, just based on how long the day had been. And then we kind of cut the difference on the second one. Went to, I think it was 390. Yeah, 391. Uh, her best pull is like 435, I believe. But sometimes she gets a little hitchy at the top. So we told her on this last one, we said, listen, it doesn't count if you, we, obviously we didn't go to a PR. We just wanted to pad her total. It doesn't count if you hit it, so I'd rather you miss it during the right and just be patient. And like fucking patience on this was so good. 
so good. I was like, there's no way she's not gonna hitch this, no way she's not gonna hitch this. And then that last little bit, boom, down. So we were very pleased. Uh, yeah! <laughs> she was stoked. Um, we were very pleased with her performance on this day. Um, and I hope she had a good time. We had a good time handling her. She's gonna take a little time off and relax. So, congratulations to Autumn. Here's Sunday, my man Spandy rolling in with the cornrows. Let's go, he looked Spandy. tough Let's as nails. This kid had a fucking day. He had a fucking day. So, here's the opener, 3.30. Uh, Spandy's in single ply, obviously. Um, he's, a, he's a gamer, for sure. He is a fucking gamer. He looked great all day. As you can see, the, uh, the judging is very tight. Very, very tight. Um, here's a second, 358. I believe no, this was not a PR. This just like cut it, cut it in half a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Here he was. So and then uh, he really wanted a 400 pound squat. So we went to 400. The kid only weighs 100 and fucking 48 pounds. So uh, 400 pound squat is is very big. So, went 402 here, and uh, very pleased with the outcome. He did a great job taking it out, letting it settle, waiting for the squat command, um, and his, his, uh, his depth was obviously great. He did a good job controlling it, and uh, yeah, we were still okay, probably squatting another 30 pounds. So, really, really stoked for, for how his squat went. Um, on to Josh. This is head back, his head back, last legs, warm up, legs, I believe. Settle. So Josh made a little bit of a cut, not nothing crazy, you know, 10 pounds or whatever, 10, 11 pounds. Um, nice looked pretty good in the warm ups. A little fatigued. Um, we weren't really sure. And then here's Chris Robinson. He's a trigger warning guy. Um, he came out from LA. And uh, the depth that they took him to is just. Madness. He did a really good job staying in position on those. Um, I'm really pleased about that. So here's Josh's opener, 727. And uh, a little shaky at the top, but settled it, which was awesome. Uh, and really, really good depth, really good control. Looked super solid. So that's 727. Uh, back to Chris. Chris with a 5.67 uh, second attempt, and this one looked really good too. A um, little bit of a grind through the middle, but looked really solid positionally. Here's Josh's second attempt, uh, 7.77. Uh, great pick, great composure at the top, and he absolutely Manhandles this one, especially with how deep it was. So he looked really good there. Um, and then uh, back to Chris. So this was his third attempt. This would have been for a five pound PR. And uh, this is a very gnarly grind. Um, <laughs> it's like almost too long. And you're like, you think it's gonna go and he just, he just dies. So uh, that was probably a little bit of the elevation as well. Here's Josh's third attempt. Very wobbly on the pick, but he, he had great patience to wait for it. And then he just kind of lost it. Um, and that would come into play a little later when that happened. Uh, here's Spanish's last warm up for his bench press. Uh, did a really good job. All day, this kid. He looked fucking awesome. So, uh, here his opener is 192. Again, he weighed in at 148. So, um, it's pretty impressive what he's doing in single ply, smashing these weights. And that put him in the meat. So, we were very pleased with that. Um, he was just like, had a plan and stuck to it, and it was great. So here's uh, here's Josh with some of his warm ups. The meat it was weird because the flights moved fast, but in between flights took fucking forever. 
forever. Um, once you were in it, it was moving fast. So here's Fanny with a second attempt, 220. This is like a 20 or a 19 pound PR, like an empty bar. Very, very good. He was stoked on that. Uh, getting told that he couldn't have his underwear sticking out of his singlet. Just very ticky tacky with some of the judging. Um, so here is his last attempt and almost puts it over his face. Uh, all right, so here's Josh. Josh passed out on his last warm up um, with his bench press. So. Uh, and then it happened again on the platform. He's completely passed out there. So we had him, you know, kind of gave him some ammonia, woke him up. Here's Chris. Chris's bench has looked fucking perfect all day. Just absolutely immaculate patience. Great bar path. Just like really good stuff. So we we're very pleased with that. Uh, back to Josh. Gave him some ammonia and loosened his shirt a bunch. As soon as we could get it, it came straight down. I was like, oh, he's gonna bench this, no problem. Presses it. He doesn't even remember getting the press command. Um, he was like almost passing out when he was standing up too, so. We figured we got one more shot at it. So second attempt for Chris. Really, really good job here. Uh, it actually moved better, I believe, than his opener because, uh, maybe not, maybe I lied. But it looked really good uh, on the day, so that was excellent. Um, he did a really good job with his bench. It's unreal that he trains alone. So this was Josh's last attempt. Um, and we, you know, it's like I brought the side spotters out with one of his own guys there. He's there, and then he is passed out. He's completely out. Um, kind of scary. Had a little bit of a, I don't know if it, it's not a seizure, but it was definitely something weird. Uh, the elevation of the cut got to him for sure. It's a bummer, but if you're going to bomb and then have nothing fucking be your... It's definitely not your fault, so with that shit, so nothing you can do. PR for Chris. He was stoked. Um, I can't believe he trains alone in that bench. It's psychotic, so... Uh, here's Spandy's opener. Took him to 292. Um, did really good there. And then he needed a 380 for the total he wanted. So we went to 341 in between. Um, he got called on an up down here. I don't think it was up and down. I think that he just stopped. I can't believe they called that, but they did. Um, and he was bummed. And then he went to 341 again. And sort of the same deal. He definitely kind of hitches that one, so that one made sense for them to not give him. Uh, Chris went to 451. Smoke, he really wanted 500, so we gave him 500 against my better judgment. Uh, we went ahead and missed it twice. This one falls out of his hands. And they were having a hard time with the bar. Slipping out a lot of people saying anything. Mean, this one gets kind of over it, and he was just smoked at that point. So, missed that. Uh, Spandy won his weight class. He's stoked. He'll be at Utah for the foreseeable future. Um, his family's vacationing. And yeah, overall, this was a great weekend. We had an awesome time. Um, had a nightmare dinner experience the following night. We don't have to get into this is when it was happening. Hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.